All right, so I had a few requests from viewers to make videos on drugs for anti-cancer medications. So in this video, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna talk about specifically anti-metabolites and hopefully soon in the near future, I'll make the videos on the other anti-cancer drugs, but it's not gonna be as professionally done like as some of my other videos because I'm not gonna waste time doing that. I'm just gonna get straight to the point, talk about what's going on and hopefully it'll be helpful. So in this scene over here, we have this ant over here and this ant likes chewing on metal bots, like metal robots. So this is the ant that chews on metal bots. Ant that chews on metal bots for anti-metabolites. So this guy over here is going to remind us that we're talking about anti-metabolites. He is the master in this scene and he is sort of overseeing what's going on over here. He has his workers over here building, building different structures for him. Over here, he has some workers building this pyramid, which is gonna remind us of the pyrimidine analogs. Over here, he has some workers trying to uh, build a pile of foliage, which reminds us of folic acid analogs. And finally, over here, he has some workers working on this gigantic pure ring. I don't know what a pure ring is. It looks kind of like a ring, but pure ring reminds us of purine analogs. Now, before we get to these specific drugs, let's just make this point over here that we notice this picture over here that he has, that he likes to have next to him, of this mountain lion skeleton. He loves mountain lion skeletons. This mountain lion skeleton is going to remind us of myelosuppression, since myelosuppression sounds like mountain lion skeleton. Anyway, this reminds us that all the drugs in the scene that we're gonna discuss can lead to myelosuppression, which is basically a decrease in bone marrow activity resulting, of course, in reduced blood cell production. Okay, now let's talk about the individual groups. So here we have the pyramid, again, which reminds us of the pyrimidine analogs. And there are two, spe and there are two specifically that we're going to discuss. Over here, we have this bean guy who always likes to go on his side. This side bean guy for cytarabine. Cytarabine is one of the pyrimidine analogs, and it works, of course, by copying pyrimidines. It pretends to be a pyrimidine and therefore acts to terminate the DNA chain. So again, this sideways bean for, for cytarabine. We notice that this sideway bean over here likes to hold two things. He likes to hold this key over here that has Luke on it, the Luke key for leukemia, as cytarabine is used to treat leukemias. And over here, he likes to hold this lymph node with the foam on it the lymph node with the foam for lymphoma. So again, cytarabine is used to treat leukemias and lymphomas. We notice over here that there is this huge pan on its side. I guess the pan on its side likes to hang out with the bean on its side. So the pan on its side for pancytopenia. Cytarabine can lead to pancytopenia. It can also lead to megaloblast megaloblastic anemia, represented by this huge red blood cell over here. Maybe this huge red blood cell over here is used to cushion the floor in case the sideways bean falls on the floor. So again, cytarabine can lead to megaloblastic anemia and pancytopenia. The other pyrimidine analog that we're going to discuss is 5-FU, 5-fluorouracil, represented by this urinal over here that has the five flowers on it up here. Five flowers urinal for 5-fluorouracil. So 5-fluorouracil is also a pyrimidine analog. So 5-fluorouracil works by forming a complex, which eventually leads to decreased DNA synthesis. And that's why it, work, and that's why it works as an antimetabolite. But anyway, let's talk about the uh, clinical uses of it. And that's represented by what we see in this urinal over here in the background, these pictures. We notice over here the anatomical picture of the colon cancer and the pancreatic cancer. Here's the pancreatic cancer, here's the pancreatic cancer, and here's the colon cancer. And we see this carrot over here that likes to act. It's the acting carrot, acting carrot for actinic keratosis. And we also note that he likes to play on his bass guitar over here for basal cell carcinoma. So 5-fluorouracil is used in the treatment of can colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, actinic keratosis, and basal cell carcinoma. Now let's talk about the adverse effects. We notice over here that this guy over here has these hands and feet red. 
which reminds us of the Palmer planter erythro erythro erythrodysthesia, also known as hand-foot syndrome. So again, 5 fluorouracil can lead to hand-foot hand syndrome. And also, as we mentioned before, myelosuppression. And just as a side point, the effects of 5 fluorouracil can be enhanced with the addition of leucovorin. Okay, now let's move on to the folic, the folic acid, uh, the folic acid analogs. And that's represented over here by the foliage. Okay, so we have the foliage over here. And we notice out of the foliage, there is this metal T-Rex over here coming out. Metal T-Rex for methotrexate. Methotrexate is the folic acid analog that we want to be aware of. So again, folic acid analog analogs work by decre decreasing DNA synthesis. And they do this by competitively inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase. But anyway, it's the clinical uses and the adverse effects that we want to be aware of. So over here, there are a lot of clinical uses and a lot of adverse effects. Let's make this fun. So again, we, over here, we see, we, see, we, we see the key leuk for leukemia and the lymph node with the foam. So methotrexate is used in the treatment of leukemias and lymphomas. We also note over here that there is this uterus over here. And the uterus has these eggs over here by the ampulla. Which are, so the eggs for ectopic and the ampulla, because ectopic pregnancies usually happen in the ampulla. So uh, methotrexate is also used in, in a non-neoplastic case in ectopic pregnancies. Over here, we see this room over here that's very colorful. We'll call this the room of art. Room of art for rheumatoid arthritis. That methotrexate could also be used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, as well as other inflammatory diseases such as psoriasis and IBD and vasculitis. And over here, we see this car over here that has a few apple cores all over it. Maybe someone painted these apple cores on it. So this is the core car. Core car for choriocarcinoma. Methotrexate can also be used in the treatment of choriocarcinoma, as well as sarcomas. Okay, so that's for the clinical uses of methotrexate. If we take a look over here, next to this pile of foliage over here, this thing fell. And this thing that fell over here reminds us of the adverse effects of methotrexate. Again, a lot of them. Let's focus on this sign over here. So this sign says, my hippie nephron fell into mucous lungs. I meant to say lungs. So anyway, this hippie nephron over here, I've never seen a hippie nephron, but this is a hippie nephron over here. The hippie nephron fell into the lungs, okay? So my is going to remind us of myelosuppression. Hippie is going to remind us of hepatotoxicity. Nephron is going to remind us of nephrotoxicity. Fell is going to remind us of folate deficiency. Intermucosy is going to remind us of mucositis, such as mouth ulcers. And lung is going to remind us of the pulmonary fibrosis, okay? So these are all adverse effects of methotrexate. Okay, now let's move on to the purine analogs. So here we have the pure ring again. Again, the, the pure ring reminds us of purine analogs. And we notice next to the purine that there are two characters. One over here on the left is this bean over here. Again, another bean. But this is the cloud bean. It's, he's got like a cloud on his head for cloud bean. Cloud bean for cladribine. And on the other side, we see the thigh. It's like a leg, a thigh, with the AZ on it. AZ thigh for AZ thiaprene. So let's take a look at the cladribine. Cladribine over here, we notice on his cloud over here, he has a picture of Luke for leukemias. So, and it's specifically in his hair because cladribine is used specifically in hairy cell leukemia, as opposed to azathioprine, which is used in lots of conditions, which we didn't talk about here, but for example, in preventing organ rejection in rheumatoid arthritis, IBD, SLE, and other conditions. Adverse effects include, well, for cladribine, he's standing on two ends over here. The two ends remind us of nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity, as cladribine can lead to ne nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. And of course, myelosuppression. As we mentioned at the beginning, all these drugs can lead to myelosuppression. And azathioprine, we see over here that he's standing on top of this liver, which reminds us of the, uh, the liver toxicity, the hepatotoxicity, which azathioprine can cause in, in, in addition to other GI toxicities. Okay, so just to review over here, we talked about the anti-metabolites that was represented by this ant over here with the metal bot. And we spoke about the three different groups. We spoke about pyrimidine analogs, represented by the pyramid. We spoke about folic acid analogs, represented by the foliage. And we spoke about the purine analogs. Pyrimidine analogs included a cytarabine, represented by the sideways bean, and the 5-fluorouracil, represented by the five flowers on the urinal. 
Folic acid analogs included methotrexate, represented by the metal T-Rex, and the purine analogs included azathioprine, represented by the AZ thigh, as well as the cloud bean for uh, cladribine. Okay, so these are the antimetabolites. Hopefully one day we'll make this video more professional and more fun, uh, and hope, I hope to get to the other anti-cancer drugs in the next few weeks. Alrighty, take care.